Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Janet, I'm worried. About the church supper, Mother? I promised I'd make the chicken pies, but the way I felt lately with headache and muscular aches and pains, I don't feel up to it. I don't wonder with that discomfort. Better do something about it. But what? Try Doan's Pills. Good advice. That's Doan's Pills, an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidneys. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains may come on with overexertion, emotional upsets, or everyday stress and strain. Doan's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable, with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Doan's pills, used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Doan's pills today. To save money, buy Doan's big economy size. (laughs) I I swear, Matt, you'd think that Chester was getting a love letter every day. The way he races off after the mail. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. He sure likes to pick it up every morning, doesn't he? Uh, I'll say he does. He barely takes time to chew his food before he's off after it. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about Chester, Doc. He gets his nourishment, all right. Oh, I know he does. <laughs> but I could write a new medical book on his digestive processes. That's a good idea. Why don't you do that, Doc? Chester would sure like to be famous. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not so sure he'd like for me to cut him open. <laughs> You're probably right about that. Okay. Uh... You coming in the office? Not this time, Matt. Thank you. I got a call to make. All right. Well, but I might give you another lesson in checkers after supper. Are well, you sure welcome to try? All right, then. I'll see you later. So long. The U.S. Marshal ought to be where folks can find it. Ah, hello there, friend. It seems to me even a U.S. Marshal has a right to some breakfast. Sure took your time at it. Well, I'm here now. Uh... Who's this fellow with you? That's what I come about. Listen here, Marshal. Can a man run his own cattle drive or can't he? It seems to me you've always run yours, Finn. What's the trouble? A man don't have to have nobody riding with him less than he wants, does he, Marshal? Of course he doesn't. You know that. Well, then, lock her up. Lock who up? This this lying, contrary, mule-headed woman. Woman? Come here. Turn around so the Marshal can see you, but you are. Take your hands off me. See, Marshal? See? Now, just a minute. You have no right to keep me here, either of you. Your smart talk won't do you no good around here. You've been breaking the law like I've been saying right along. There is All no right, law that says... Both of you, quiet down. All right, now, Finn, what's this all about? She wouldn't get, Marshal. That's all there is to it. She hung on like a stray calf. You mean she rode up all the way from Texas? No. She joined up when we come to the Cimarron. She was pesky as a tick at Deep Hole Crossing. You got an idea what a woman can do to a cattle driver? I merely want to observe. Well, I ain't carrying you along to Abilene. You lock her up, Marshal. Now, wait a minute, Finn. Wait a minute. I'm not sure there's any reason to lock her up. She's an unwomanly woman. That's what she is. Unwoman. Oh, All right, hold on there. Here now, Marshal. Slashing at a man with a quirt. That's disturbing the peace. You gotta lock her up. You can't talk to me like I that. I said, hold on. 
All right, Fenn, you, you go along. I'll take care of this. You better put the irons on her, too. Just let me worry about it. Huh? I'm just warning. I said go on. Fine specimen of a man. Never mind about that. What's your name? I don't have to submit to interrogation. I said, what's your name? Phoebe Appleby. All right, Miss Appleby. I suppose you told me what you were doing hanging on to Finn's cattle train. I have already told you I was observing. A cattle drive? Exactly. There was no reason for him to object. Well, I don't know how it is where you come from, Miss Appleby, but out here a cattle drive isn't figured to be a place for a woman. Trail boss is not going to welcome you. He had no right to speak as he did. You wouldn't leave when he asked you to, would you? No, I wouldn't leave. A journalist has to become accustomed to not being welcomed. A journalist? That's right, Marshal. I'm here to write a true picture of the West. And I must say I'm not impressed. A woman dressed in man's clothes isn't given a true picture of herself. I don't need any lectures from you. You're not going to get any. All right, come on back here. Where? What for? I'm going to lock you up until I can figure out what to do with you. I've committed no crime. I don't want anybody else to commit one either. My paper will hear about this. Yeah, I may write him a letter myself. Now, come on. You better have another beer, Matt, to calm your nerves. It is not that funny, Kitty. You'll have to admit this one woman as you're more upset than the last few gunmen you've had to contend with. Well, I know what to do with a gunman. And not with a woman, is that it? <laughs> Miss Russell, when you're through enjoying the big joke, maybe I can ask you to help me, huh? Oh, sure, Matt. You know I'll help. What do you want me to do? Well, she's, uh, she's got to have a place to stay. You're going to let her go, then? I locked her up more for her own protection than anything else. No telling what had happened to her if she walked up Front Street. I thought you said she wasn't very, uh, well, that she wouldn't exactly turn a man's head. Oh, no, she's no looker, Kitty. It's the man's get-up she's wearing. She's oh. a sight. The rowdies aren't going to make it easy for her, that's all. Well, you better get her some clothes. Yeah. Yeah, that'd help some. And I think Ma Smalley would let her stay in the back room until the woman, uh... What's her name? Oh, uh, Appleby. Phoebe Appleby. Until Phoebe makes up her mind what she wants to do. Yeah. Uh, Kitty. Hmm? You got some clothes she could wear, maybe? Well, I don't know, Matt. What size is she? Well, she's about, uh... Uh, well, she, you know, about, about that high, I guess, and, uh... Yeah. Well, she's not very big around. Uh huh. Well, thanks, but I think I'd better see for myself. <laughs> yeah. I guess maybe you'd better. I cook 15 years. Observed, everyday vegetables often very dull. I'd like you to know about French's Worcestershire sauce. Reason? French's is Worcestershire that make big difference in cooking. Please to listen. French's Worcestershire is honorable sauce cherished for generations. Rich with rare ingredients. Exotic spices. Example, one ingredient, soy. Very special with vegetables. French's Worcestershire, full of spicy ingredients. Fifteen in all. And good as soy. Uh, but not Chinese. You try vegetables cooked this way. One tablespoon French's Worcestershire added to boiling vegetable water causes mouth to also water. Ah, so? Just be sure of name. French's Worcestershire, from honorable makers of French's mustard. Thank you. Back here, Kitty. Uh -huh. uh, 
Miss Appleby? This is Kitty Russell. She's uh, come to help you. Hello, Phoebe. I don't need any help from you. Well, somebody ought to help you get some clothes. My clothes are waiting for me in Abilene. Not going to do you much good in Dodge. If you'd uh, stand up and let me look at you, maybe I could find something to fit you. I suppose even Dodge City has a shop that sells dresses. There's a general store. It sells dresses? It sells dresses. Well, I suppose it'll have to do. We managed to get along. Here. What's this? Well, I should think you could see. It's a purse, Miss Russell. You may purchase me a dress. Something in a... pale yellow, I should think. Of good material. Something better than calico. Oh, of course. We couldn't expect you to wear calico. And perhaps you can get me some suitable... underthings. I'll try. All right, if I go now, Matt? Yeah, sure, Kitty. Uh, you might find out about Ma Smalley's room, What's too. What's that? Well, we're looking up a room for you to stay in, Miss Appleby. Would that be in a boarding house? Yeah. Miss Russell, mm -hmm. on your way back with my dress, would you please engage a room at the hotel? Matt? Well, I guess you might as well, Kitty. It'll save Ma Smalley some trouble. Sure. Oh, Miss Russell. Yeah, Phoebe. Please get a room that's suitable for me, will you? That won't be easy, but I'll try. Oh, say, I'm glad to see your appetite has returned, Matt. Well, more. I didn't know you'd been feeling poorly, Mr. Dillon. I'm all right, Chester. He was off his feet at noon, Chester. He was. I'd say it was, uh, woman trouble. Wouldn't you, Kitty? She'd take my appetite away. Well, now, of course, I ain't sorry, but it sounds like you're being mighty hard on a poor, misguided female lady. Oh. You all right, Miss Kitty? Kitty, it's merely a case of smothered imprecation, Chester. What's that, Doc? Is that something serious? <laughs> never, never mind, Chester. Just finish your dinner and let's get out of here. Well, but Doc says she's got the... Uh, Marshal? Uh, yeah, Pete. I got this note for you from her. Oh, from who? That lady. The table over there. Oh? Uh, thanks. Well, well, go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. Read it. Oh, yeah. Huh. She wants to talk to me. She does. Well, well, who is it? A strange woman in town? You've been talking about her all through dinner. That woman? Mm. Over there in the yellow dress? Yeah. That's Phoebe Appleby. Well, well, she doesn't look the way Matt described her. She, she's not bad looking at all. Well, as a matter of fact, she's a very handsome woman. Well, Matt, she's waiting. Uh, yeah, yeah. See me? Yes, I did. Sit down. Thank you. Uh, what did you want to see me about? I guess I owe you an apology for my appearance earlier today. No, there's no need for that. Yes, I think there is. A woman should always look her best. Don't you agree? I guess that's up to the woman. <laughs> That's very clever of you. I had a reason, of course. I was so anxious to get the story of the cattle drive. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, very few women look their best under those circumstances, Miss Appleby. No, no, of course not. But I do think a woman should have a chance at a career. Don't you, Marshal? Well, I guess that depends on the woman, too. How about me? Uh, well... Miss Appleby. Call me Phoebe. Uh, uh, Phoebe, uh, this doesn't seem like you'd need a career. What do you mean? Uh, it's just that uh, you're a rather handsome woman. And, uh, Your ideas have changed since this morning, haven't they? <laughs> well, so have you. Not really. 
I still want to observe. Send back a true story of the way things are in the West. The wild, wild West. Oh, we aren't that wild. We aren't that interesting either. Then I'll have to observe that too. Listen, Phoebe, there are a lot better things for a woman to observe. Are you afraid some big man with a gun will walk me into your office again and ask you to lock me up? Maybe. Well, it's not going to happen this time. This time I'll be right where you can watch me. I'm glad to hear that. I'm going to stay here in Dodge, acting like a lady. Until the next time you go out to round up a prisoner. No. Then what? Well, then I'll ride out with you. Hold on. I should have thought of it before, riding out on a manhunt. That'll be a story that sends back to Philadelphia. I'm afraid that's a story that you're going to have to make up. Give me a chance. I can ride. I can even shoot. I wouldn't hinder you. Uh, Come to think of it, you might even hinder whoever I was after. Don't laugh at me, Marshal. I'm serious. I'm serious, too, Phoebe. I couldn't take you out on government business. You're afraid. You're afraid to let me go with you. As a matter of fact, you may be right about that. This is Dennis James with a long-time favorite. Yes, the long-time favorites are usually the best, aren't they? And one favorite folks have relied on over the years is Kellogg's All Brand. Since 1919, America's favorite natural laxative cereal. Kellogg's All Brand is the safe, gentle way to overcome irregularity caused by lack of bulk in your diet. It tastes good, too, and it it never gets mushy in milk. There's only one All Brand, Kellogg's All Brand. So relieve constipation the way millions do with Kellogg's All Brand. A-double-L hyphen B-R-A-N. Yes, you're so right to stay regular with Kellogg's All Brand. Try it, okay? Okay. Thank you, Kitty. Have a drink? Oh, thank you, Kitty. No, I've got too much to do yet. Huh? I actually came in to look for Matt. He isn't here. Oh, well, you know where I might find him? No, Doc, I don't. I haven't seen much of him lately. Oh, uh, I see. What do you mean, oh, I see? Oh, nothing, nothing, Kitty, no. It's just that you don't seem very happy with Matt just now. Oh, I'm not... Happy or unhappy? Just that I hate to see him make it a fool of himself. Oh, so you think that's the way the wind blows, huh? That woman's after something from that, Doc. My guess is she's going to get it. Well, now, I don't know about that, Kitty. I must say, though, that she has turned out to be a real looker, hasn't she? <laughs> oh, the new dress never hurt any woman, Doc. Especially when she's been wearing trousers. Oh, yes, but you get... She... Great heavens. Hmm? What's the matter? What in town is that woman doing in here? Looks to me like she's going right up to the bar. Excuse me, Doc. That's right, bartender. Leave the bar. Hello, Phoebe. Oh, oh hi, Miss Russell. That's right. Oh, of course. This is where you work, isn't it? I'm an owner of this saloon. But it isn't a very good place for unescorted women, Phoebe. If this whiskey is an, any indication, it isn't a very good place for anybody. I'd really suggest, Miss Russell, that you improve its quality. The whiskey should be the least of your worries. I'm not really worried, Miss Russell. Well, you should be. Women just don't come into the Long Branch, Phoebe. 
Be smart if you leave. I have a right to observe, Miss Russell. The American people have a right to know what goes on in these Western places. Well, I can tell you that. In this saloon, they drink. <laughs> Are you afraid of what I might say in my article? No, I'm not afraid. Go ahead. Observe. I'll be here in case you need help. I'm sure I won't call for help, Miss Russell. <laughs> well, that's going, it, little lady. Who are you? Just call me Pen, ma'am. I sure do like a woman who knows her own mind. Well, that's a refreshing attitude, I must say. That's a what? <laughs> hey, Russ, come up this way. I got me a fancy talking woman for sure. <laughs> you better watch out, Pen. Them kind is dangerous. Oh, not when they're so pretty. Let me buy you a drink, lady. No, thank you. I have one. Oh, come on. I got me plenty of money. I got me enough money to buy everybody a drink. No, I'm Pam. sure you have. Sure I, I have. Don't... Just listen. Come on, everybody. I'm buying. Oh, Look, I don't know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Step right up. Step right up. See, lady? I got the money. You and me could be good friends. Take it easy, Pen. Just because we got it in a hurry don't mean you got to spend it in a hurry. Oh, did you men strike it rich? Uh, yes, ma'am. You could say we done that. Pen, why don't we just... just uh, how did you make your, your strike? Uh, made it... Gambling. Uh, mine. I didn't quite understand. Never mind, ma'am. Nothing to trouble pretty gals of mine with. Don't you think on a little lady? On the contrary, I'd like to know about it. I think you can buy me that drink after all. Come quick. Huh? Come where, Chester? The Long Branch. Uh, Miss Kitty sent me. Uh, all right, come on. Hurry up. Trouble. Well, well there ain't no trouble yet, but it, it's just what might happen with that Miss Appleby lady. Uh, Phoebe? Yeah. She down there? Uh, she walked in just bold as brass, Miss Kitty says, and stepped right up to the bar. Uh, she don't act like she's got good sense. She's trying to prove she's got too much sense, Chester. That's the trouble. Well, Miss Kitty says a couple half-drunk strangers up there at the bar whooping and carrying on something yeah. terrible, and she's afraid there might be a rupus. Yeah. Miss Dillon, tell me, what makes a lady get such a crazy idea as to go into a place like the Long Branch? I don't know, Chester. Let's just hope we can give her the idea to get out. <laughs> And I do want to know all about it. It'll make a first-rate story. Now, this mine, where did you say it was? Why, uh, it was up, up west. Up north a ways. You don't seem to agree. Well, that's because he ain't never knowed when to keep his mouth shut. Now, you listen here, Rudd. I got as much right to talk as you got. You talk enough and you wind us up in jail. You mean this might be a case for the law? Now, you see there, Pam? Why, well, it ain't nothing, lady, nothing at all. I have an idea that you didn't get the money from a mine at all. Come on, Pen. Come on, where? We're going to get out of here before I you don't talk know anymore. Place. I said move. The gun. That's right, lady. Hey, what's going on? Now you get out of the way. She ain't going to get out of the way. She's going to stay right here <laughs> in front of me. Now, you ain't going to shoot a lady, Rudd, are you? Let me go. Not right now, lady. Not till he gets gone. I'll shoot the both of you if I have to. All right, drop the gun. Not hardly. Now let the lady go. Uh, I didn't hurt her none. Get his gun, Chester. Yes, sir. All right, you. Get up. Come on. My, my hand. You near shot my hand off. You're lucky. Take him along, Chester. Lock him up. Yes, sir. It was her, Marshal. It was her making Penn talk. 
There'd never have been no trouble. You'd never have known. I might have. A wanted poster came in this morning. All right, go on, Chester. Get Doc to look at that hand. Huh? All right, you. Come on, you. Walk. Oh, you get out. All right, Phoebe. Looks like you've got a story after all. Phoebe. You're going to have to wait for your answer, Matt. The lady journalist has just fainted. <laughs> a little anxious, Marshal. Wait, I'll miss the train. I'll be glad to see you safely out of here. <laughs> we'll say that. I hate to ever admit a man is right. But you were about one thing, Marshal. Oh, what's that? There are better places for me to pursue my career than a Dodge City saloon. <laughs> yeah. What? Well? Marshal's office can stop worrying about me. As soon as this train pulls out. There'll be other things. Yes, I'm sure there will be. And I wouldn't be surprised if once in a while you wish to have me to worry about instead. Isn't that right, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, come on. Have to get on the train. Goodbye. Nothing like carting along an extra carton or two of light, refreshing Pepsi Cola. You can enjoy all you want of Pepsi's lively taste and sparkle because Pepsi refreshes without filling. So travel light with light, refreshing Pepsi wherever you go and whatever you do. Buy an extra carton. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. and directed in Hollywood by Norman McDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Gene Bates, Barney Phillips, Harry Bartell, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week. When CBS Radio presents another story on gun smoke. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. CBS Radio's where you are. Stars shine every morning. They shine right through the day. On CBS Radio, we never put the stars away. Our blink letter. Moore and Godfrey. Sing and Clooney songs on CBS, CBS Radio. Stars shine on. And where you are right now is WBT, your CBS station in Charlotte, presenting next the CBS News. At 7.05, keep tuned for another hard-hitting adventure with yours, Trey Dollar. Tonight...